Hello everybody, I am back at it again, Vampir. I am recording this right after the last episode um, because I felt a bit bad about the fact that I, I made a blunder such like such as the last episode with going into a whole other part of the city thinking that I like in my, in my head I was thinking that Dorothy just didn't spawn or something but she was here all along and I feel very foolish about that so anyways, uh, we will proceed into the sewers. <laughs> sewers are more healthy than a district. Awesome. Oh, that's always old. He's locked the door behind him. Is I need to find another way to follow oh, yeah. him. I'm sure we'll find something. Just a matter of time. This man has been savagely attacked and dragged to the floor. Oh my god! <laughs> That's a lot of blood. A little sex. This is a joke. Yeah, not even a chance. Common barbed cudgel? Cudgel? Ooh, oh dear. Oh, it's a two handed weapon. Uh, we'll give it a try. Why not? Might as well. See how it feels. A large wooden stick dropped with barbed wire to their flesh, while it also crushes bones. The sounds go that way, but I trust this way. Let's see what this baby's capable of. <laughs> oh, that's that is satisfying. Okay, the guy got dragged over over there. It seems like so. Let's continue down the path. See what we can find. Oh, oh wait. Oh my god. <laughs> I am starting to like this thing. The ban of the dragon. Concerning the Brotherhood of mm, sorry. Concerning the Brotherhood of St. Paul Stowe, I would advise our members to be very wary about these so-called scholars. Yes indeed, most of them are always a affable and respectful whenever they approach us uh, but it would be quite unwise for a discreet circle of uh, a circle like the Ascalon Club to foolishly speak about our goals, our members and uh, our traditions. I would like to be remind uh, I would like to remind our fellow members that the Brotherhood itself is ancient enough to have some mysterious traditions. One of them according to some informants could be the ritual of the so-called ban so-called ban of the dragon it seems that in certain conditions when the brothers of saint paul find a violent or bloodthirsty immortal they could uh, they call upon from his ban uh, they call upon his, uh, him his this ban what is it exactly i don't know does it really exist i don't know for sure either what i have established as facts it is that whenever a hostile vindictive vampire has threatened london he disappeared without a trace after the brotherhood pronounced a ban upon him the loyal fergal pancha himself has never been foolish enough to openly provoke the brotherhood this is a lesson we must all remember never be considered a dragon by the brotherhood from the law of Ascalon by Lord Redgrave Founder. Okay. Food. I can't believe I'm doing this. Am 
come on, I want more food. I have this thirst for blood. Opium, nice. Okay, wait, there was another path that I would like to take. But this one looks like the main path. Prostophobia. Save the panicking man by defeating the skulls. several people at once. Be the other guy. Are you injured, sir? Help me get out of here. I need to get out. I'm Dr. Reed, and I'd be glad to help you, but you must calm down first. Please take a deep breath and tell me your name. Okay, okay. I I I'm Oswald Thatcher. Please, I need to get out. <laughs> I am not saying Mr. it again. Thatcher, your friend Newton sent me to help you. Do you remember him? Yes, yes, I do. Good. Now leave this place and enjoy the cool night air. It's quite invigorating. I'm sure you'll feel better if you do. Goodbye. And take care. So yeah, good. Good, good thing I came here. Just in case. Let's just speak to that dude. Ah! Well, doesn't this look like a little arena of some sorts? And I... Is that what I see? Is that a skeleton right there in the middle of my screen? Wonderful! Well... <laughs> what sort of creature is this? You would have been a surprise if I didn't go to the other city. <laughs> this thing just stuns. Some of our stamina. Okay, enjoy my snack. Let me reload a bit. Nice, and I got the berry. Let's go. Oh, that wasn't a berry. That, oh, that was not a parry either. Oh. Enjoy my food. Because you just ate me. You just bit me, so I bite you. when I need to be worried. Gonna take a little bite. Nice. Gonna parry. Man, the parry though is amazing well in this game. Okay, yeah. We need to dodge that at all costs. Oh, 
and a finishing point. Man, I wish I, did, I wish I didn't go to the city. That would have been so much cooler. Here's what's left of him. Not a lot, to man. Check, but I should that think that the quick walk of that guy. If you're sick, if you have no money, well, whoever you are, when, wherever you are, you're born, come see Dorothy to get help. No tricks, no charges, no questions ask, asked. Uh, just find Darius Petruscus house and present this coupon. I, uh, I'm not bothering reading that language. Some voucher for a free checkup in Whitechapel. What is Nurse Crane up to? I really must find her. Man, that that was that, that was a good setup. Hello. I have this thirst for blood. Just just didn't want to see the red on my health bar. I'm sure you guys understand. It's a little distracting, is all. Man, imagine you come in here and you instantly get jumped by a like, beast and you're like, what the hell? I'm just trying to walk here, bro. Now this thing is open. Thank God. Don't have to worry about it being closed constantly. Please, I feel sick. Get over here now. Oh, reach Whitechapel. Man, I... <laughs> the last episode, I, I really did make a blunder, didn't I? Well, at least I cleared out the area, so I don't have to fight them again. Oh wait. Wait, what was I expecting here? Uh get, get back in the grave! Man, okay. This sin cannot be forgiven. Man, you are persistent. Okay, here we go. One, two, one, two. We have to stop it. And there we go. A bit sloppy, but oh well. I have indeed reached White Whitechapel. This neighborhood is linked somehow to the kind Lady Ashbury's blackmail. First, let's find this Petrescu fellow. I mean, you see, we already read this one. Okay, it's more propaganda posters. Cool. A large box of pills. Good. guy just got shot you're right are you all right the bastard hit the wall next to me I don't even know if he meant to miss if you've been hurt I can help you I'm a doctor name's Albert remember it now bugger off 
Now get to me about your life in London. What happened? Did you really steal that man's medication? Hey, I didn't do anything. It ain't me. What? What? Uh, maybe he can use it with someone else. Medication and drugs are a rare commodity in East London. So you picked an easy target, didn't you? Shut off, mister. You ain't got no clue what's going on here. Bastard was a soldier in the war, so now he's got the right to shoot me. It's true. I'm not familiar with this part of town. Perhaps you could help me. I said sod off. Go find yourself another guide. Damn, you're a bit of a... Do you know Nurse Dorothy Crane from the Pembroke Hospital? If you know anything about her, I'd appreciate it. Never heard of her. She's pretty, I'll keep an eye out. <laughs> She's pretty, I'm gonna keep my an eye out. I found the recruiter you were expecting. He's dead, but he carried a note. The wet boot boys have accepted your application. I knew it! I told you I was tough enough. I'll be free soon. <laughs> You're being manipulated by these criminals. What's worse is that you're clever enough to know better. You're all fancy words, none of which concern me. Go worry about someone else. I'm fine and I have a future here. Oh man, your life must suck. Goodbye, young man. The wet boots will be proud of me. You waste. Jesus, what is going on? a boy in the middle of the street. Not the best thing to do, wouldn't you say? What? You saw what happened. Who are you? I'm Dr. Reed, and I'd like to ask you a few questions, if you promise me to set your gun aside. No. Look, I I'm not a violent man. I'm Benjamin Palmer, doctor. Little Benjamin. No one can help me. Not even you. Do you know Nurse Dorothy Crane from the Pembroke Hospital? Have you heard anything? It's funny, I've been searching for her too. I need some pills. But the woman is a phantom, if you ask me. Really? And why is that? Word is she ain't real. She's a cover for some doctor who runs an illegal dispensary for migrants. <laughs> it's really interesting. What can you tell me about this place? Nothing to say, really. This is where I used to live, and this is where I live now. You mean you used to have a better life? Yeah, I had a wife, a home, and a job. I even used to have a name. And now I'm just Ben. Ben the Trap. You don't have anywhere to go. Let me guess, he no came family. back from the war. Not, not since the death of my wife. Oh, no. Albert's mother. She was sick, you see. Long before the flu and all this shit. And this man looks like he's gonna fall over any second now. you could focus for a moment and tell me your troubles. I'm sick. Broke and my son just stole my pills. Uh, <laughs> Everything's okay. coming up roses. That's your son. Whatever the boy did, I'm sure he didn't deserve a public execution. I swear I didn't want to hit him. It's just that I'm sick in the head, you see, and the boy just he just faked me last nerve. Okay, tell me about what the war, please. It, it was the war, wasn't it? Your nerves are shot, aren't they? I need some answers, Private. From one soldier to another. The doctors called me a liar. A coward. Put me in a straight jacket, locked me up. Finally, they sent me back to the front lines with a handful of tablets. Yes. Sounds like shell shock. I've seen a few cases like yours. This is nothing you should be ashamed of, Benjamin. And it's perfectly natural in your situation. Not Man, I love Jonathan. I just need my pills. Peace and quiet, that's all. Oh, guy, man. A gun, alcohol, and a bad temper make a terrible cocktail, sir. Goodbye for now. So, do I know what's wrong with him? He has a migraine. He has fatigue. I can treat his fatigue right now. Hello, boy. How are you, boy? I'm not your boy, all right? Now, piss off. Do you need assistance? Please. Feeling tired these days. There you go. 
Let's hope nobody steals it from you. Very funny. <laughs> Goodbye, young man. The wet boots will be proud of me. Ah, uh, you have no idea what you're getting yourself into, do you? Yeah, I need to treat him at some point. Bloody hard, boy. Who are you? Good evening, miss. Good evening, sir. Loretta. I'm interested in a miraculous cure for this unknown and deadly epidemic. Actually, I am. Then you have come to the right place. The famous Swanborough Cordial is all you need to help keep you in perfect health. Oh, really? Why didn't I hear about it during my studies? I'm Jonathan Reed, by the way. Dr. Jonathan Reed. Ah, my brother has spoken of your research, sir. I'm Loretta Swanborough, and it's always a pleasure to meet a fellow healer. A fellow healer. Okay. She has trade. Do you know Nurse Dorothy Crane from the Pembroke Hospital? I'd like to know more about her. I don't like to talk about competition. 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 Never met her, but it seems she provides some sort of medical care to the poor. The whole thing has to be some sort of scam, if you ask me. Scam, you say? Tell me, who intrigues you most in Whitechapel? The region itself is something to see, but I would say Camellia, the mute florist who gives away her flowers. Okay. What do you think of the locals? Most of them are afraid or desperate. They all come to me eventually for my remedy. Remedy, okay. Cadogan Bates, without a doubt. Cadogan Bates. All oh, right, this is the guy I saved stories. from the oh, hotel or whatever, the here. flat. Also, I just I just started looking at your general outfit. Man, you are fashionable, to say the least. I'd like to see what kind of medicine you're selling. Yes, I, w I am quite interested. Cordial with list of ingredients printed in Latin. This, Latin, this uh, item can be trans. Okay, sure. I'll grab it. I don't know if I need any of these, so I'm not touching them. Thank you for your time. Curious, can I find anyone else? I wonder. I'm sorry if you don't like seeing me like going through the game with this vision. Uh, it makes easier, like it makes some things to spot a bit easier. Like um, if there's, like for example, there's that dude. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, oh, a ring. Cool. Basically, it will give me an outline over someone if they are like you know a person of interest, basically. That allows me to detect enemies from a distance. So I'm just kind of going through the areas like this because it makes it uh, a bit better for me. There's Carrigan. Got the shit bag. It's locked on the other side. Hello, Carrigan Bates. Good evening, sir. Do you remember me? If you're here for a reward, you'll be sorely disappointed. But I'll gladly shake the hand of a fellow countryman. <laughs> I'm not here <laughs> for a man. I'm a doctor. Dr. Reed from the Pembroke. A doctor? In Whitechapel? What an opportunity! <laughs> My, My name, name is Bates. Bates. Cadogan Bates. Do you require assistance, Mr. Bates? Not me, but your skills could help a lot of people round here. That would help my business, <laughs> I say. What a... tenants, a paying tenant. What a opportunist. You know, you do. I'm gonna Since give I you this. Since I took an oath to help people, can I be of assistance? Well, seen better days, that's for sure. But it was bound to happen with all these refugees about. Man, are you horrible? Infecting you is probably the last thing on these people's minds. Take this in any case. What? You give me this for free? Don't have a clue about this place, do you? Just get better. I'm looking for Dorothy Crane. She's a nurse. What can you tell me about her? Dorothy Crane. Bless her soul. I really should thank her someday. Oh, has she told me more? No. When I need a checkup, I'd go to a bloody doctor, not some back alley clinic full of sick foreigners. I am so confused. What do you see? It's so unusual happy, yeah. to see someone so happy around here, especially considering the current situation. 
Why should I be sad now? There've always been wars, disease, tragedy. There always will be. That's an unusual way of seeing things in these trying times. I don't Very see why unusual, I should shed a yeah. tear for another man's woes. I'm healthy, and I intend to stay so. All right. What help could I possibly be to your business? That's simple. I already get good money from all those fleeing the war. Can you imagine what they'd be willing to pay if I could offer medical assistance to... Mr. Bates. And does that make me regret saving your life in this quarantine zone? <laughs> I understand, Dr. Reed, you're from a good family. Don't want to get your hands dirty. It's not That's that. fine. I'll be happy to act as your middleman. Matt, it's not that. I don't want such a, dubious, <laughs> such a dubious associate. If I were entering into the world of street medicine, it would be on my terms and without such dubious associates as yourself, Mr. Bates. So it's a no, then. <laughs> so it's a no, too bad. <laughs> Re-tonic would have really helped people, you know, save <laughs> the lives. Isn't that what you do? I mean, people buy that swamberous shit. Swamberous shit. <laughs> it's re tonic What is your business exactly? I offer fair logic. This guy is a, na he's, he's a natural born businessman. I see. And what about those who cannot pay? Well, deals can be done, if you know what I mean. Money's not the only currency. After all, I'm not immune to a pretty face. Oh, boy. In other words, you take advantage of these poor lost souls. Begging your pardon, and this guy is horrible. a man who could appreciate the complexity of the modern world. Things ain't just black and white, you know. Tell me. If you say What's so. What's your honest opinion of the increasing violence in London? People are just beginning to discover what we've always known. This city's rotten to the core. They just took their bloody time to wake up and notice it. What do you mean? People are acting like the violence is news. But it's always been savage down here. It just bubbles to the surface every now and again. Huh, in interesting outlook. You seem to have recovered well since your attack. Do you ever think about what happened to you? Not much. It was a fucking nightmare. Savages, absolute bloody <laughs> savages. Their appearance, Jesus, that made me want to puke. You'd better not I don't come back. I here. don't blame you. I won't be around next time to save you. I want to know everything about the recent violence, Cadogan, and I want the truth. Well, rent may be a bit high, and yeah, I've had to evict a few people, but that's business, isn't it? No, no. I wish I only found you later. Oh my god. I, <laughs> I don't want to be like a dick or anything. Sir, I wish I had found you a few nights later than I did. Or maybe never at all. Death would have been a well-deserved punishment for your villainy. Yeah, but you saved me, didn't you? And you'd do it again, because you're a decent Dude. chap. Just know I'm not. Take this as my final warning. You will not profit from the misery of others. Business is one thing, but what you do is quite another. Really? What you gonna do? You ain't from here. You ain't Whitechapel, Doctor. You wouldn't know the first thing about playing dirty, even if you wanted to. I mean... I'm uh... looking for Dodo. Tell me truthfully, why are you so thankful? By keeping my tenants alive. She's making me a rich man. Of course. Every month they live, it's more coin in my pocket. Oh man, you're just something else. Goodbye, Mr. Bates. Well, I healed you. Never again. Man, what a what a sack of shit. Is, uh, is that most mostly everyone? Oh, I'm not doing close to meeting everyone in Whitechapel. Oh well. Let's continue with getting to know Whitechapel. What? What do you want? Leave me alone. Hello, Darius. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. I'm looking for nurse Dorothy Crane. There is no Dorothy Crane here. No, oh, goodbye. goodbye. I'm afraid this medical leaflet says the opposite, sir. Really? Well, I'm afraid I'm going to close this door right Go now. Go bother someone else. bother someone else, Mr. Doctor. To enter that house, I must discover who this man really is. 
Maybe I could start by observing. I must insist, sir. Sir, please let please me let see, see that screen. I have no time for you, sir. I will find a way. I hope you realize that. Bronchitis? Man, you're, 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 you're fucked. Can you open, please? Okay, you don't want to open. That's fine. I'm sure we'll find a way. I cannot enter. Okay, this this obviously doesn't lead anywhere. You're just a proven brawler. I'm not interested in engaging with you right now. Where did that go? Oh, inside, obviously. Stairs. Uh... There's a skull and... Oh well. Again, I'll come back. I'll do that later. Oh, I need to figure out how to observe this man. See if I can find a good angle on him. Oh, okay. It was just a matter of time, I guess. Here we go. The strange man was at the door with a pass for our medical facility. I refused him entry. Darius, how could you know he didn't need our help? His clothes were too finely tailored to be for Whitechapel. Perhaps just a friend of that stray poet who is always about. Uh-oh. Richard Nidercott? No, not of the same cloth, this man. I suspect some machination from that journalist. Clayton Darby? Is he still asking questions? Yes. I saw him drifting around St. Mary's Church. I swear he is tracking me just downwind. I must talk to that journalist or the poet. They must know about Darius. Find Richard in the report on Clayton Darby. What intrigue? Joe, please, I don't have your money. Come on, Barrett, you know the game. You pay for peace of mind. Can't you just look the other way this week, Joe? Come on, we can sort it out, right? It's not my call, Barrett. You paid one way or another. Please, Joe. How long have we known each other? We even used to be neighbors, for Christ's sake. I'd prefer not to give you another beating, Barrett. Oh, aren't you two? It's a special Excuse couple. Me, sir. I have a few questions for you. Another journalist? I didn't answer the first one, so piss off. I'm not a journalist. Piss I'm a doctor. Off. A doctor, you say? It's quite a rare breed in this part of town. Really? But still, here I am. Dr. Jonathan Reed, at your service. I'm Joe Peterson, son. But Colossus Joe at most. Colossus Joe. And I don't Joe. remember asking for your service, sir. Now you do seem quite healthy. Have you heard of a nurse named Dorothy Crane? She's a colleague of mine, and is supposed to live around here. Dorothy Crane? Yeah, I know her. One of the few good souls who dare to help the sick around here. Could you please tell me more about her? She's a nice girl. Tries to help the migrants. I offered to give her a hand, but she said my reputation would attract too much attention. Too much attention. Interesting. According to you, physicians are scarce in this part of town. Why is that? Not familiar with this neighborhood, are you? I guess your fancy colleagues are too afraid of being stabbed in the back. This part of town does have quite a reputation. Would you say it's justified? Totally. Look at me, for instance. I always look my opponent in the eye before knocking him out. <laughs> May I of ask course. what you do around here? I'll do whatever I want, and sometimes even more. Now sod off. Oh, sod off. Well, I will leave you alone. And you are Joe, Welcome, right? Sir. 
Uh, please, take a browse of my wares. I am Dr. Reed. I would like to ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. Doctor? Interesting. I'm Barrett Lewis. Usually I don't have time to waste with talk, but at this hour of the night I can hardly refuse. <laughs> have you heard of a nurse called Dorothy Crane? Nurse Crane? So the bitch really is a nurse, then? Wow. Always thought she was just some crafty foreigner, that one. <laughs> the migrants. Yes, she's a nurse, and quite a good one. What did she do to gain such notoriety? Dorothy Crane ain't even a real name. Something like Dorothea Craniu. Something like that. Came to England fleeing the war, I was told. That doesn't mm. explain why she irritates you so much. And because she's an immigrant. Nurse Crane gives away medical supplies and prescriptions for free. I offered to sell it for a fair cut, but no. Miss Crane wanted to play the quiet saint. Interesting, okay. I was How business, business here. around here. Business? I have no business. Between this racket, theft, and customers getting scared, I'm losing money every day. I see. Sounds like you blame someone in particular for your situation. It's no secret Joe Peterson spends his time harassing merchants. But with me, he's trying to put me out of business once and for all. Hmm. As okay. a merchant, you see Whitechapel every day. Have you noticed anything out of the ordinary recently? Well, you mean besides the epidemic, the war, and all the usual crap? As long as I can remember, this part of town has been a bottomless pit, and no sign of the bottom yet. Man, he loves this place. Violence is increasing in the borough. Yeah. A few nights ago, some blokes jumped me. Came out of one of the condemned workshops. Fever. Madness. Something like that. Where did this happen? Why did you go there? In the closed workshops nearby. I worked there as an apprentice in better days. Now I only go to find trinkets or tools. Too bad I was mugged, though. There was good money in that little box of loot I lost. Have you I'll give that in mind. Home? But that's only because I ran like hell. Those men were raving lunatics, I tell you. Not even able to speak anymore, just screaming. Okay, skulls. I can handle those. Right then. Show me what you have. Ooh. He saw some good pot. I don't have any more money, so... Well, let's go speak to Joe quickly. You? How did you become the local bully? Oh, everyone, everyone is afraid, afraid of, of Joe. Joe. There's no pride in roughing up poor bastards. But this is the only job I've found. And it pays well, too. A job? So you're racketeering for someone else? I got enlisted by the wet boot boys. No man, the docks. wet boot boys. Their muscle for their dirty work. Most people don't become thugs when unemployed. This is a choice you made. I don't care what you think, sir. I'll do what I have to do for my own reasons. And oh, that's no. that. I'm not sure Mr. Lewis would agree with your by all means necessary philosophy, sir. Oh, do you really think he's the poor victim here? Barrett can be as sneaky as anyone. Long ago, I even called the bastard my best friend. Oh! What happened? Do you mind sharing? Goodbye, Mr. Peterson. Well, I guess it's a love story between these two now. Tell me more. I am curious now. Joe Peterson. He's the villain here, isn't he? But you seem to know each other. I've known Joe for years. I saw him box once or twice. He was a friend then. But these days, he's just another thug. That's sad. What yeah, tell, tell, tell me the story of Mr. Joe. Peterson. I'm quite curious now. Besides his behavior toward you, obviously. Colossus Joe was a decent boxer. Good one, even. But after his wife passed away, he found every excuse to stop training. Just wanted to pick fights with everyone. Uh... Without making excuses for him, 
to it's safe yeah. to say that despair can poison even the sanest mind we've all Poor had Jordan. some rough times ain't we but most of us don't use our fists to see us through yeah but otherwise you have no different ways of coping to this thug. nobody will be fool enough to stand against a wet boot boy that's very interesting thank you for sharing i'm sure we'll Goodbye learn more now, Mr. Lewis. time okay very interesting Soap on the way. Hello, young man. I'm Dr. Reed, and I would like to ask you a few questions. May I enter, please? Sorry, no, sir. My father does not like people entering our house, you see. Your father is worried about you, boy. He asked me to look for you. So my father actually worries about me, then? <laughs> okay. okay, Harry. I'm Harry, by the way. Suffering in this world. <laughs> Hold on, Harry. I'll speak to you in a moment. I just need to look through your house. It's like really quick. I'm sure you don't need any of these. You know, I, I need them a bit more. Yeah, I, I, I need them a bit more. Are you suffering from fatigue, my boy? It's locked or Might be able to treat that. Job refusal letter. Job refusal letter. Dear Mr. Peterson, it is my duty to inform you of our refusal to accept your application for a job at the dockyard. I must thank you for the time spent at our office explaining the difficulty of your situation. With your ill boy and the loss of your beloved wife, but it's also my duty to point out the policy of our company, which express, expressly repro reproves the deployment of former criminals of criminals or convicts. Your unfortunate connections with the ill-famed red Good boy, uh, boys have been dull and duly noted. These are hard times, sir, and uh, Finch and Harper intend to reward first the candidates who pass the small inquiry we like to conduct about our future employees. You have my deepest sympathy, and may God be with you and your family. Sincerely, R. D. Harper. Oh, I, I picked up something on the table. What? It uh oh, I picked up something on the table. I don't know what it is. Oh no, that's not good. Ah, uh, there's a screen. What a diary. What did I pick up? Hey. Can't I? Isn't there? Wait. Uh, out of proven question of vampire, a modern paper? No. Wait, is this? She's a vampire, and son, the vampire club. Man of the Dragon, Bertos the Belly of the Beast, Great Hunt, Hail to your comrade. What did I pick up then? There was something on the table here. I'll figure it out in the recording then. And we'll be watching it back. He must be sick with fatigue or some shit. So, may I ask you a few questions? I'm not bothered. What could be worse? You do have fatigue, okay. I'll be able to treat you soon. Do you know Nurse Dorothy Crane from the Pembroke Hospital? I'd like to know more about her. Yes, I know her. She came here to examine me when I was very sick. She said I should go out more. Should go out more, okay. How do you feel? I'm fine. I mean, it's not easy every day, but I'm fine. I'm just tired of being sick all the time. If only I could be tough, like... Well, you know. Mm. Speaking of which, what can you tell me about your father? My father is an idiot who makes idiot things. That's all I have to say. Forgive my blindness, um, okay. man, But you don't seem happy living in Whitechapel. Why should I? I never wanted to come here in the first place. It was my father's decision. And look around you. Does this look like a nice place to live? Yeah. 
I'm sure your father did his best when he found this house. Times are tough for everyone, young man. That's exactly what my father says. Harry, you should be grateful for what you've got. But I wasn't even consulted when we moved Ah, uh, okay. If life here is so terrible for you, why don't you just leave this place? Have you ever spoken to your father about it? I... I don't go outside. It terrifies me so. I went outside once without my father noticing and I saw terrible things. Bloody and frightening things. So that's why you stay at home all day? For fear of the epidemic? I'm not afraid of disease or death, Dr. Reed. Still leaving, I'm afraid of that. <laughs> I'm afraid oh, of. I love that. Okay. Forgive my blunt. Why I'm sure you... That's exact. Okay. I will come back to you when Goodbye, I have the medicine. Man. Take care of yourself. I will come back when I have the Is medicine. Pain and suffering. Hello, miss. Don't be shy, handsome. What can Christina okay, do well, for you? Okay, well, I already know what kind of woman she is. Selling. But I'd like to ask you a few questions, if I may. I'm a doctor, Dr. Reed. All right, then. But be quick, though I usually get paid when I open my mouth. <laughs> she also has fatigue. I will ask the questions first. Christina, have you been examined? The epidemic is spreading fast in London, and you could be exposed, or expose others. I don't like doctors or hospitals, but I don't like you asking questions. <sighs> Considering your <laughs> line of work, I assure you it is only a matter of time before you have health issues. If it is going to happen, it will happen. Right now, I need money. That's what's important. Man. You can put your own life in danger, that's your decision. But what about your clients? If you're contaminated, you will put them in danger too. And you think that would worry me? <laughs> you're the man I if deal you with. The men oh, I no. deal with, their health would not be what you'd worry <laughs> oh my about. God. Oh, Christina. Tell me Tell about me yourself. yourself. Are you joking with me? People don't usually come to see me for conversation. Well, I'm, I'm not exactly no your usual chap. I am, however, curious as to what led you into this career. <laughs> Short story. The war, exile, and England. This country is not especially welcoming. I've been refused many jobs because of where I am from. She, she sounds Romanian, so... You tried to find another job that was... That, that was your decision? Yeah. Oh. I'm sure you could have found another job. Perhaps less lucrative. Maybe you should try again. And when exactly was the last time you looked for a job? Or worried about the rent, or what, or when you were going to eat? Yes, I understand. I'm, I'm at the point I'm going for. Could this be the scarf you lost, Miss Popper? It is much more than a scarf to me. It is the only thing that connects me to my family and my country. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm guessing I was not supposed to find us so early. What? Do you know Nurse? I don't know her, but I know her name is Dorothea Krasionescu. She came Romania. from Romania, Interesting. Like me and many others. You seem to Krasionescu, okay. Dorothea helps the sick people of Whitechapel. Everyone should respect that. Goodbye, Miss. Take care of yourself as best you can. I <laughs> I failed to hint on people already. Or trying. Hmm, you seem like a lovely chap. Okay, I have to heal a lot of people. Forgive my interruption. Do not apologize, my son. Father Tobias Jupiter is always happy to teach mortals about the incoming Armageddon. Mm. I am Dr. Jonathan Reed, and I just have a few questions. Just a few. You are much more lost <laughs> than I thought myself. Man, I keep... Oh, I'm not you saying it about Nurse Dorothy mm. Craig from the Pembroke Hospital? I'd like to know more about her. I don't like the liberal ideas of nurses, but I especially abhor that Nurse Crane you mentioned. 
Yeah, why did you hate her? Nurse Crane more than other nurses. Before coming to London, she was a member of the communist resistance in her country. That's what happens when you let a woman get involved in politics. Oh, you're a lonely so you're person. So you're not exactly a fan of Florence Nightingale's work. But nurses are essential for modern healthcare. Nuns should be the only women allowed to take care of male patients. It's obvious only Man, they have you're a necessary so old-fashioned. I hate you so much already. Have you any friends? Any family left in these terrible times? No. But I have a disciple I see as my son. He is so devoted. I sent him to preach the good word in the heart of this corrupted city. Send him on some preaching crusade. Where did you send him? I sent Samuel to the Stonebridge Cemetery, where the pestilence and evil grows night after night. Boy, he's probably you sent dead. him on some preaching crusade during the epidemic. As a true believer, Samuel will fear no evil. Man, religious, some religious people are brainwashed. Holy sh! I'm not speaking more on the topic. What do you mean when you say that I am more lost than you thought? All scientists are entangled in a world of causes and consequences, and most of them can't see the plain truth. Quite a judgmental opinion, if you ask me. But what do I know? Blinded by science as I am. But well, you are seeking <laughs> answers, aren't you? Answers about the Armageddon about to strike the city. Answers about the hidden truth. Ah, uh, sure. Well, I suppose I can spare a few minutes listening to your so-called truth. As a doctor, you must be aware of the decimating epidemic. But let me tell you that this so-called Spanish flu is just the beginning of the end. What do you mean? The beast is finally revealing itself, corrupting the flesh and the heart of men. With my own eyes I have seen them, those minions from the abyss. Yeah, what's Riff. your plan? Tell me. And what would be your answer to this biblical threat? We must fight the disease before this legion outnumbers us. But not with scalpels and microscopes. No. What I'm is left then? Cleansing fire. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, Tobias, what exactly is your plan concerning the cleansing of this city? God will recognize his own. More than once this city has risen from the ashes, hardened and purified by the flames. Holy shit, you're delusional. Purification by fire has proved useful, but where do you stop? Burn the clothes, the buildings, the corpses, worse? Your lack of faith is predictable. But my task is to convince <laughs> rational minds like yours to see the light. This is God's will. You're mad. And I dangerous. agree. He's crazy. You're but a soulless butcher. A small time Torquemada. The Savonarola of Whitechapel. Savonarola. If you think salvation is a free gift, go listen to the lies of that pompous fool, Joseph. Joseph, a fool? Vicar Larrabee of St. Mary's Church. While he continues preaching his fraudulent redemption, more and more people die in the streets. I... Man, I hate you. I genuinely hate you. I've heard enough for tonight. Goodbye. Oh my lord, he's a horrible person. Excuse me, sir, are you familiar with you, this You're looking town? sharp. Name's Clayton Darby, reporter. Sorry, I'm new to Whitechapel. But perhaps you could help me since you're a journalist. My name is Jonathan Reed. <laughs> Dr. Reed, the famous surgeon. I'll gladly help if I'm able, sir. Oh man, okay. Why are the newspapers keeping silent about the Spanish influenza? It's as though none of you care. There's a war going on. People shouldn't be demoralized by news of deadly diseases. Uh, it's a disgrace, it's a yeah. It's a disgrace. 
People are left yeah. to die alone. No one is properly informed of the risks. These are bad times indeed. So much for the glorious British Empire. Have you any idea of the danger you face in these streets at night? I've had to run and hide more than once from frenzied mobs incensed by the fever. Do you think the flu is really responsible for this, Doctor? There is a rational explanation. I must confess, some of my rational views have been shaken by recent events. I'll remember to stay away from the district's roughest streets then. Good, good. What is a journalist doing in this borough after sunset? He goes where none of his colleagues would dare to go, to inform the country. You risk your life to relieve, relieve the truth. The public interested. Yeah. So you risk your life to reveal the truth. I saw many reporters do the same during the war. Whitechapel is the crucible of so many untold stories and tragedies. I want people to know them. Hmm. Okay. That's quite honorable of you. But is the public interested? Not at all, sir. And that's why I'm an independent journalist, hoping to sell some stories. Independent, of course. Christina Popper claims she sells her body because she can't find any other work. Do you believe her? Of course I do. Her story is exactly what I want my readers to understand. We live in an intolerant and divisive. Yes. Do you think things will ever change? I love this kind of stuff. I believe the situation can. I love improve. this kind of storytelling. Now that women can vote, I'm convinced things will change. Let's fucking go. I heard you're investigating an underground medical dispensary in Whitechapel. What do you know about it? Not much, I'm afraid. They are weary of strangers, and I'm not really an acquaintance of theirs. Why do you care? I'm a doctor, Mr. Darby. I care about everything involving public health and this epidemic. Are you sure you're not just concerned about the repercussions that a scandal involving a certain nurse crane from the Pembroke Hospital would bring? Without a doubt, you are a damn fine <laughs> Mr. Darby. What do you know of man. our accomplice? A man he named is Dallas. very clever. I don't know much about the man. He's very cautious. Never goes out. Doesn't seem to have any friends or family. He has no relatives at all? No. Except for that strange man. A poet named Richard Nithercott, who sometimes comes by. Darius would never let him in. Where can I find this Mr. Nithercott? He spends most of his time lurking around Whitechapel talking to himself or declaring verses. These days, you can usually find him behind the church. Behind the church, okay. He never goes out? No. A few days ago, he unexpectedly did. I followed him, but it was just a ruse to keep me away from his house. Really? How do you know? He went to the nearest mailbox, but just before posting his letter, he ripped it up and threw it away. Hmm, interesting. Okay. Thank Goodbye, you. Goodbye, Mr. Darby. Farewell. Man, Darby is a cool guy. I like Darby already. Right, so there is someone behind this church. Spy or something like that. I'm sure. Damn, you guys are piling on each other. Quarantine influenza. Want to untouch that? What is this? Stay at home. Influenza. Again. Is there a hideout that you're nearby? I would like to make some medicine. But alas, not yet.
Must be Richard. You all must be. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. Who are you? Like to ask you are you questions. Samuel? Please be my guest. No, Richard Although again. I may not be the best informant regarding this part of town. My words speak about that which the eyes cannot see. Really? Are you an artist of some kind? I'm a poet, sir. Okay, you're Richard you're the poet guy. Cool. At your service. Are you aware that your life could be in danger in this part of town? But this is where I must be to feel the real beat of the city. I had to come, see it for myself, alone. If some misfortune came upon you, who would be here to help you? Well, you for a start, my dear doctor. <laughs> I understand your need for solitude. I mean, it's not safe. He is, he is thinking care. properly about it. I yes. don't have many friends, doctor, and my family despises me. Interesting. You also have a cold. May I ask what you're doing at this hour of night, sir? Do you live here? Not at all. I'm just enjoying the pleasure of a quiet walk. Though night talks are always preferable, if you ask me. Especially with strangers. Especially with strangers. But are you not afraid of the epidemic? Oh, why should I? I see some equity in the Spanish flu. Uh, no flesh should be saved, say the scriptures. Good or evil, rich or poor, all are equal in the eyes of the flu. I... I guess? If you say so. But as a physician in a time of epidemic, I must caution you to avoid unnecessary exposure, sir. Thank you, Doctor. But we both know the seeker of truth has to go boldly where the weak dare not. I... I guess? What are your thoughts on the terrible situation in this city? Terrible, you say? No. Of course, the death of so many innocents is a tragedy. But the scourge has not been all bad for the city. Oh, no, sir. What are you talking about? Do you remember London before the flu? Noisy, cacophonic, quiet nowhere to be found and now listen to this oddly peaceful silence um yes the enjoyable silence of the grave yeah we you have a new perspective on this kind of stuff yeah <laughs> just a little bit fail to understand my perspective i don't blame them but how could i call myself a poet if i veiled my feelings I... man, I... Tell me, Mr. Nethercott, why seek inspiration in Whitechapel? The place is not beautiful per se, but uh, how to explain it? Stirring and challenging. Stirring and challenging. Do you not think it a little morbid? On the contrary, sir. Whitechapel is full of life, full of beauty. Just like Here's a dear poet. The wonderful Camellia. What can you tell me about Camellia? Not much. And that's the beauty of it. She can't speak, you know. She's a locked mystery who exhales kindness and sweetness. Perhaps you're just afraid to find out the truth about your muse. One day, perhaps, I'll ask her to come with me. But ah, will she still be my wild flower of Whitechapel if she moves uptown? I, and have you you ever are a little bit creepy about, about this. Where she lives, how she survives, whom she may know. Maybe I prefer she remains an enigma. Reality can be so dull, don't you think? I. In what way uh, exactly? The struggle by gaslight, the barren smiles, and the added hunger under the rain. If you say so. Such vibrant antagonism and vivid paradox, the stripped humanity raged across each street. Vivid, of course, yes. And what about the poignant distress? Oh yes, the poignant distress. You see what I mean, don't you? That's what I want to write about. <laughs> oh my and that's God. what Whitechapel is made of. You are a piece of walk. Well, tell May me about the cream. a few questions about the district. Extraordinary part of town, is it not? I'll be glad to help you, if I can. Tell me about Dorothy Green a little bit. 
a nurse who lives in this vicinity. Dorothy Crane. Oh, I love the name. The Crane of Whitechapel. Sounds very mysterious. But, sorry, no, never heard of her. Huh. What can you tell me about an old man called Darius? Darius Petrescu? Yes, I know him. At first, I thought he was only a small publisher. I invited him to publish my work, He's a but publisher. his reaction was pretty clear. Not interested in your talent? Darius is an old political activist who takes delight in printing tracts and lampoons. Those communist activities only require <laughs> mediocre <laughs> writing God. skills. Oh. Okay, I'll speak I'll to you later. You alone, sir. Find the inhabitants in our I, I just did that. I did the refuse letter. Uh, dear Mr. Nefercott, thank you for sending your book of poems, Songs from the Defeated City, which we found as interesting and profound as we told you the first time we received it. Alas, in the terrible times our country is currently facing, you must understand that such a title would be totally inappropriate for any publication. Thus, since you still refuse to change your title and demand the full publication of none of your work, or none of your none of your work, I'm sorry to announce that the Sycophant Publishing choose, chose the second option. With kindness regards, A.G. Morris. Man, I... <laughs> and you don't really make a living from your scribblings, do you, Richard? No, sir, I don't. I work so hard. I put all my time, my energy, my devotion into the precise carving of words. Perhaps it's time to think about something oh, more no. useful to do. I'm not sure that poets are what London needs at this moment in time. Men and women need food for certain, a roof and safety. But how narrow is the mind of one who believes art is not as essential? Goodbye for now, sir. <laughs> uh, I'll leave yeah. you alone, sir. You're something else, my man. You're something else. What, what do I see? Flower bucket, a small flower bucket with a voucher for a free medical checkup hit between the leaves. You must be the, the camellia that I heard about. Just give me a second. Get in between the flowers again. I'm guessing this is just a trend. Wait, if you're say- ah, okay, he's done for, uh, from earlier. That is Petruska's letter. My dearest, my most, my most beloved children, I am sorry you have not heard from me for a few months. The situation in London has been difficult. I know it may sound selfish and silly when you, when you my children, are still li living in a country consumed by war, but there is also a war going on in here in England, a war against poverty again, and against injustice. There is a war intensified despite my advanced years. This is why I am writing to you today. I won't be coming back to Romania. That probably means I won't see you again before I die. Don't be sad. My darlings, you are grown up now and you have children of your own. You know the sacrifice we sometimes must accept it. Make the world a better place. This is one I must make now. To feel useful one more time. I wish you a long and happy life. Kiss my grandchildren for me and remember that your father loves you all the way from this cold, damp country. I am as ever your loving father, Darius Petruska. The content of Darius' letter to his children could give me more leverage to enter. Darius is a bit less of a mystery now. It should not be that difficult to... Okay, let's speak to Camellia and I think we will run up the episode here. Good evening, miss. I'm Dr. Reed. I'd like to ask you a few questions. She's a mute, isn't she? I know she? what you're thinking. A tall stranger who meets a girl in the street at night. She's a mute, probably, yeah. Weeks of the penny dreadfuls. But I mean you no harm, truly. I know you understand what I'm saying. Your silence has nothing to do with you being mute, does it? Melia, I know you work for Dorothy Crane. Please tell me about her secret dispensary. Hmm. 
a stubborn and mute comrade. Nurse Crane <laughs> and Nurse Petrescu have been clever. Tell me about Richard Nivercott. I understand he is quite fond of you, Camellia. <laughs> Oh man, I love this, I'm not gonna lie. Very well. Goodbye then. Oh, thank you, Camellia, for <laughs> giving our episode a wonderful end. Uh, but I'm afraid I must end the episode here because I've been going on for quite a while. Um, we got to meet a lot of the Whitechapel people, which is awesome. Um, let's see how many we have met. Oh, we've met all except one. I'm sure we will see this person soon enough. Ah, uh, we also have quite a few people to to cure. Fatigue, 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 migraine, and a cold, a bronchitis, migraine. You know, we, we I, I have some people to go through before I can uh, cure this district of the, uh, of its ailments. So, with that, I must say the usual of: if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and. Uh, Feel free to leave a comment, subscribe, uh, all of those things will, you know, make me be able to make more content in the sense uh, for more people, because more people will get access, well, will be able to view these videos, and uh, all that matters to me is entertainment. With that, I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.